All right, ladies and gentlemen, what you need to be successful for today is a whiteboard and your notes. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is, uh, please tell me what is the name of, oh, what country, European country is all of the other European countries trying to avoid paying, which will spawn the age of exploration. What is it, Ashlyn? Italy. Italy. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Uh, please tell me what is the name of the country that will rise first as the first uh, exploration power. They're going to become a huge power in Europe. They're going to crash pretty quick. But who is my first country to rise as an economic power post Rome? Reagan. Portugal, on your whiteboard, please tell me the Portuguese capture take over what island chain that has sugar. Good. What is it, Madison? Azores. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is. Please tell me what is the name of. The gentleman who is the first to sail around the Cape of Good Hope. This sounds like a repeat. It is because I had two people get it right the first time. Okay. What is it, Slav? Diaz. Diaz. Bartholomew Diaz, which is why I was concerned you had the name on your whiteboard. Please tell me, what is the name of the... Did we get to circumnavigation? No. Okay, so that's what we'll pick up. So take out your notes. Let's go. We got to hustle real hard today. Okay, you can raise your hand. And tell me where we did leave off, though. What do you got, Emma? Okay, so Christopher Columbus is going to land in 1492 in uh, in the islands in the Caribbean. He does not hit continent. Is he considered a worldwide success? No. Does he die rich and famous? No. No, he dies in shame. Uh, and poor, and no one really cared about him. With that being said, uh, about 50 years after his death, the Spanish are going to come back, and then the Spanish are going to rise because of Columbus's discovery. But immediately, no one really gives a crap. Why doesn't anyone care? Why don't we care about Chris, uh, Columbus's discovery immediately? Shannon? Yeah, they wanted to show up in India and have all the goods ready to go because the Indian Ocean Basin has been trading for centuries, so they have the goods ready to go and be po uh, are portable. In the Americas, they weren't expecting it, so nothing really happens. Okay, underneath, okay, we are in circumnavigation. So we know that this is the first time Afro-Eurasia and the Americas are being tied together, correct? Okay, so you do need to know, okay, circumnavigation is where we left off. You need to know Ferdinand Magellan. Right there, Ferdinand Magellan is the first person, and you're going to put it in quotes, to sail around the world. He's credited with it. If you're credited with it, did you really earn it? Nah. Okay, so Ferdinand Magellan is going to be the first person. He is sailing for Spain, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so... South America, except for Brazil, all speak Spanish. And it's because Ferdinand Magellan, as he is going around the continent, puts a Spanish flag down. And that lays the foundation. You need to know that he is going to be murdered in the Philippines. He died. You just need to know he dies in the Philippines. It's because he was flirting with the chief's daughter, and the uh, chief executed him on the beach while his crew <coughs> ran for the boats. Don't worry, he's, he's going to be the first of two major explorers who get executed on a beach because he's flirting with the daughters, okay? So, it's pretty funny. But, Fernand Magellan dies in the Philippines, okay? Uh, he doesn't die in the Philippines. Yeah, he does. He dies in the Philippines, and then um, his ship makes it to India, okay? So, it goes from the unknown world to the known world, which is technically sailing around the world. It's kind of a cheap one, but he gets it. Okay. You do need to know Sir Francis Drake of England. Aren't you glad we're in recorded times with all the names? What if? How fun. On your test this week, there's like 10 names. <coughs> so, drink that in, friends. Okay, so Sir Francis Drake, uh, for Sir Francis Drake, you need to know, is going to be looking at Oregon, Washington, and California. 
Americans and then the West Coast of the Americas. You need to know James Cook. He's also English, and he's going to explore the South Pacific, um, which is why we have the Cook Islands, yes. Um, he's also going to get murdered on beach. He gets his head jumped off. Working with the, the locals. Give a space, center it. This is a huge deal, and it's going to keep coming up for another eight weeks. Here we go. Trading post empires. This is the beginning of it all, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever seen Pirates of the Caribbean? East India Trade Company, and the first one is what Jack's stealing from. So they go out and try to kill him because he's a pirate and all that stuff. Uh, we're going to create it here in a minute. Okay, here we go. So you need to know a trading post is a port, write this down, a trading post is a port where ships enter, purchase goods, refuel with supplies, okay. is controlled by a specific country that collects tariffs and duties by a specific country that collects tariffs and duties. Tariffs get you into the port. Duties are for are an extra tax for purchasing things, purchasing and selling things. So you need to know trading post empires get tariffs and duties. Okay? You need to know this entire system is created by Alfonso de Albuquerque. You need to know this entire system was created by Alfonso de Albuquerque, who is Portuguese. Why, why would a Portuguese guy be the first one to come up with a trading post? Why, Reagan? Uh, they were the first to establish ports. Yeah, they're the first ones to do it, absolutely. So, you need to know it's, the whole system is created by Alfonso de Albuquerque, who is Portuguese. And if that didn't make sense to you, you should write that down. It's because the Portuguese are the first ones to be opening ports along the coast of Africa. So ladies and gentlemen, do these make good money? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so they're regulated. Okay? They are regulated by the conquering country. So all of a sudden, you're going to want to put a star down. All of a sudden, what does everyone want, ladies and gentlemen? They want port, so people are going to start trying to take over territory in areas that people are sailing to build ports. So, are we starting to see a land race here? Yes. European countries are now competing for large ports in order to make money. Okay. You need to know that the Dutch and the English will rise as the most powerful trading companies. The Dutch and the English are going to rise as the two most powerful trading companies. Okay. English, we'll start there. You've seen Pirates of the Caribbean, this is the one they talk about. English, so write English, you can write the English East India Trade Company. You need to know that it's abbreviated EOC. You absolutely need to know that, 100%. EOC is the English East India Trade Company, right there. You need to know it's abbreviated EOC. Okay, you need to know that it is privately owned. So, there are, say, 10 men making crazy amounts of money off of it. However, it is government supported. Imagine. If Amazon, which is a private company owned by Jeff Bezos, right, and his wife, who now owns like a huge share of it in the industry, the, the wife's best friend, you know, as it goes, you didn't know that? She's the wealthiest woman in the world. Yeah. 
So, I mean, not the way I'd want the title, but I'll take the title if I can have the title. Anyway, with that being said, imagine if Jeff, Jeff Bezos had the largest company in the world, which is what the EOC is. Imagine if he had the full support of the U.S. military behind him. Oh my gosh, he's right. Ladies and gentlemen, they have complete support of the government, which means they can, and you need to write this down, move troops to support the corporation, and they can sign treaties on behalf of the country. Hot damn, people. Hot damn. So, if you're thinking these people are the most powerful companies in the history of the world, you are right. And they're also going to be one of the wealthiest companies the world's ever seen. Okay? Evelyn. Uh, they move troops anywhere. They can move troops anywhere they want. So, okay, they can move troops anywhere they want. They have complete control. Okay? You need to know... They can engage in trade, which makes sense, they're a trading company. They can build new civilizations under the title of England, and they can even declare war on behalf of England. Can you imagine if Amazon could declare war? <laughs> they already kind of control the world to a degree, let's be honest. I mean, I love my two-day shipping, so like... Let them let them have what they need, uh, but yeah, what they they have the right to engage in trade. They can build posts and they can even make war. Okay, skip the space. Dutch East India Trade Company. Dutch East India Trade Company, which is abbreviated by VOC. You need to know the difference. The Dutch East India Trade Company is abbreviated by VOC. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a must know. Okay? They can. They are supported by the uh, Netherlands. They have military power as well as government support. They can trade, build cities, and declare war as well. Do you think they're going to fight? Oh yeah, it's called the Seven Years' War. Seven Years' War is the backbone for the American Revolution. French and Indian War, have you heard of that one? French and Indian War is part of the Seven Years' War. So, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the French and Indian War. Oh, well, maybe we would have had a different catalyst, but, you know, that's it. Okay, so, skip a space, center it. Actually, I do want you to... Um, Next to East, uh, this is kind of like looking ahead a little bit, but I'm going to simplify a little bit. Next to the VOC, the Dutch East India, I want you to write. Uh, I want you to write Old World. They're focusing mostly on the Old World, okay? Which means they're looking at India, they're looking at China and stuff like that. Does that make sense? We're going to get into this ling lingo a lot more here in a few minutes, but it's Old World. Look at the EOC. I want you to write New World is their primary focus, and then eventually Old World. Okay, so they start with New World focus, and then eventually turn into Old World. That's because they beat the VOC. The EOC, the British beat the, Brit uh, the Dutch, and they take over everything. So, hence why the British are going to take over India and, you know, destroy it. Okay, skip a space, center it. You're going to do uh, European conquest in Southeast Asia. Should you be like, damn, these Europeans, they're just so good at war. 
Or is it because they have a piece of technology that no one else has? There you go. If I had a little laser that I could just go pew pew, pew pew, pew pew, and you'd all be dead real quick, does that make me an excellent warrior? Or do I just have better technology? Yeah, absolutely. So they just have better technology, they have more advanced in technology. Does that mean they're better than everyone else? No. What do you got? Have, like, they have and all that stuff. Okay, <coughs> you need to know that the Dutch are going to focus on Indonesia. The Dutch are going to focus on Indonesia, which is where most of your spices and coffee are coming from. You've ever been to the, anyone ever been to Amsterdam? Okay, Jared, little peasant, I've been there. Okay, okay, I see you. <laughs> Uh, if you've ever been to Amsterdam, which is ne the Netherlands, which is Dutch, that's all the same terms here, people, um, they have coffee shops everywhere. You've probably heard of Amsterdam coffee shops because they, uh, they also sell marijuana in the coffee shops, which is, you know, why Americans really know because how novel. Uh, with that being said, the Dutch are obsessed with coffee. Why are the Dutch obsessed with coffee? They're the leader, leading exporters of it since the 1500s. Just trying to show some connections here. To the boards, let's go. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the name of the gentleman who is the first person credited with sailing around the world, even though he dies? Before he even gets back. Look at your notes if you don't know. There you go. Who is it, Evan? Ferdinand Magellan. Ferdinand Magellan. On your whiteboard, please tell me what all uh, um what is the name of the British trading company? What is it? Uh, Daniel? Uh, yeah, British East India Trading Company or EOC. What is their rival called? Good. What is it, Alexa? EOC. Which stands for what? Dutch East India Trading Company. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is, um, please tell me, what is the name of the country that takes over the Philippines, which we win, we get in the Spanish American War, by the way. We technically control the Philippines for a Sam, okay. on your whiteboard, please tell me what is, what is it called when a port is taken over by a foreign country where they charge duties and tariffs and make a lot of money off of it, which will then begin a land grab around the world. What is this, Slav? On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the gentleman who is credited with creating the trading post system, which will then spawn our trading companies. Good. Madison. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of the English explorer who explores the South Pacific and gets murdered on the beach? Good. Who is it? Maggie. James Cook. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is, uh, please tell me, what is, nope, we're gone. Here we go. Okay. Skip a space, center it. Let's do Russia. Yeah, it's kind of weird Russia's thrown in here, but here we are. Okay. Russia, you need to know they're still controlled by the Mongols. Okay. Until the 1500s. Okay. The Mongols still control in the 1500s, and the Russians are going to overthrow. Okay, so you need to know when the Russians overthrow the Mongols, okay, they begin expanding northwards to Siberia. Ladies and gentlemen, what is Siberia known for? Yeah, it's literally nothing in there. Very few people live there. It's very, very tough place to live. <coughs> that being said, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know that the Russians are going to send criminals to Siberia. Do 
you guys like the prison TV shows? Can they show, tell you about, like, I like them too. I feel like every time we're in a hotel, my husband and I end up watching them locked up. So. I don't know why, but every time we're in, like, a hotel, locked up is definitely on. I don't know why. We don't watch it at home. We don't follow the series, but every single time we're in a hotel. They do locked up abroad. If there are prisons today in Siberia that have walls in Siberia that are, like, two inches thick, mostly made out of wood. Guess what is not good if you're living in Siberia? Wood. That's only two inches thick. And there's practically no doors on any of the cells. Why? There's no place to go. You run away, you will die. Yeah, you're literally just like freeze to death in your little cell. That's like the whole, it's crazy. You can watch it. They do like locked up abroad and they do like sad beer and It's crazy. Anyway, you need to know that the Russian uh, population is going to grow in Siberia because of the prison population. trading corporations. And what do you think these trading corporations are fighting over, people? Land? No. Trading rights. Okay, so you need to know a couple of things about it. Okay, so you need to know it's between the EOC and the VOC. You also need to know it is a three-front war. What does that mean to be a three-front war? Shannon? It's in three different places. So you need to know it's a three front war. It is in Europe. It is in the, it's in the Americas. And it is in the Indian Ocean Basin. Okay, in the Americas, we call it the French and Indian War and you need to know that. Okay, so you need to also know that there are two teams. You have the VOC. VOC is what country? The Dutch. Okay, versus the EOC, which is who? The British. Okay, so on these teams, ladies and gentlemen, who hates the British more than anyone? So guess what team they joined? Yeah. So the biggest ally for the Dutch are the French. And why are the French involved? They just want to kill British people. You have to appreciate the pettiness of the French. Like, God, God love them. Okay? So, the Dutch and the French have unified. You do need to know that um, the British are kind of on their own. Okay? Because they're pretty damn powerful at this point. Uh, you are going to see that they are going to use their colonies. They use their colonies to heavily fight. But you definitely need to know the VOC, the Dutch, and the French are going to unify against the British. Okay, you need to know that the winner is who? It's the British. Okay, you need to know that the winner is the British, and they get a couple of things. The first thing they get is they become trading superior, uh, superiorities. Okay? They control all the worldwide trade. Second thing, you need to know that they're going to have to increase taxes on colonies to pay for war. Oh my God, why do we care for that? Because of the American Revolution. There you go, because of the American Revolution. No taxation without representation. Yeah, all that. It's called the French and Indian War, which is part of um, the Seven Years' War. Okay? Three, it makes Britain a world power. Okay? Britain becomes a world power. 
So, Seven Years' War. Oh, and uh, another thing you need to know, it is the world's first world war, which means it's being fought on multiple fronts. Now, is this World War One? No, we're 300 years away from it. 200 years away. 200 years away. Not a math teacher, okay? 200 years away from it. But it is the first world war as it's being fought on multiple fronts, okay? So, it is a global war, okay? So, oh, um, you need to know, oh, there's four things. The British get India. British get India, which is a huge deal later. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is probably, can you see your desk that way? Yes, is in Alright, here we go. So, the climate exchange, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm writing it down, should you be writing it down? Yup. Climate exchange, ladies and gentlemen, this is a huge, 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 huge deal. Okay. It is the diffusion of plants, animals, culture, ideas, and disease. I'm writing disease nice and big because it's a real kicker. So I suppose it's you. It's like, no. it's dis, like D-I-S, and then E's. So dis, dis, E's, E, yeah. it's still, I hate every single lesson. In your own unique way, though. And disease. Okay, so it is the diffusion of, uh, between old world and new world. Okay, let's clarify. When we say old world, what do we mean? Yeah, average. So on this side, we're going to write old. Old world. This, that's Afro Eurasia. Okay. And we have new world. Which is the American. Okay, so for the first time, we have this connection being made. Okay, so this whole chart, ladies and gentlemen, what you need to know is new to that region. Okay, this whole chart is going to be new things to that region. Okay, so if I put something under new world, that means it arrives for the first time. If I put something under old world, that means it arrives for the first time. You really need to make sure you understand that when you're looking at this chart. Because I don't want you to think that old world has this and new world has that. Okay. So, first couple big things that you need to know about the Columbian Exchange. You need to know the new world is getting smallpox. Okay. Smallpox is a huge killer. Okay. You also need to know they're getting measles. Which is another one in whooping cough. People still die of whooping cough. Haven't you seen the axe? Oh, baby. You got a newborn. It's easy. I know, I could be gay. She's a little off in forever. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know that smallpox is the largest killer. Okay, it is specifically going to wipe out the asterisk almost single handedly. They really didn't have to kill that many people. I mean, they killed a lot of Aztecs, don't get me wrong. Like, they're going to kill a lot of people. But disease is going to kill a lot more. They estimate that disease and um, the actual attacks that some Europeans had to have is going to wipe out about 300 million people. Yeah, but the problem is we can't call it a genocide, which is what it is, uh, because we didn't have official count numbers before. So it doesn't get qualified as a genocide, because we don't know how much it costs before. 
Okay, so you need to know that New World is also getting horses. You need to know they're also getting pigs, cattle, chickens. Okay, now horses, oh, and you need to know oxen. Okay, so let's agree smallpox, measles, and whooping cough, like that's all. However, horses are a good thing because they provide what? Huh? There's also their beasts of burden. Do we agree? What didn't um, the Americans have before? Beasts of burden. You know how we have the American Mustang? The horse, the Mustang, like it's a symbol of America? You, they're not indigenous. So what happens is a bunch of Spanish horses ran away from the Spanish and then started making babies out west. Ta-da, the Mustang. That's how we have the American Mustang. Okay. So. Huh? Thank you, Jeremy. Whatever that was. All right. You need to know that the old world, the old world, so these are things that the new or old world is getting. They're getting maize, also known as corn. They're getting potatoes. Could you imagine a life without potatoes? Beans. A thing called manioc. Anyone here ever eating manioc? It's like a cultural thing. It's like a, it's a very, like, from Alabama and Mississippi, you eat manioc. It's like a <coughs> southern thing. Okay, as well. Um, you also are getting, okay, you're also going to get tobacco. You also get rum <coughs> for the first time. Can you imagine a world without rum? Imagine all the pirates. What would they be drinking all the damn time? Nothing. Water. Because rum is water. <laughs> Pirates being fully hydrated just ruins the idea of pirates. Okay, rum, rum is actually a big deal because it's going to be the most common beverage that is going to be coming, that's alcoholic beverage that is going to come about, which is going to uh, drive the entire economy for the Americans. So, like, it's not just me being an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm a bartender, so I'm a professional, thank you. Um, rum is important because it is made from sugar slash molasses. Okay, so the reason why it comes from the American, oh, it's new to the old world is because of the sugar. sugar. Now, you are also from the old world. We have, um, what is it called? Cash crops. Cash crops slash plantation. Okay, and you're going to see. They are going to be, of course, the sugar. They are going to be of timber. They are going to be of um, tobacco. Can you imagine a world without tobacco? Yes. No, but it would be. But, like, I mean, think about how common it used to be, right? Like, it's insane. Especially if you go to Europe. Like, Europeans love tobacco products. Like, they smoke way more than Americans do now, and it's an American product, which is kind of cool. Anyway. Um, tobacco, you also need gold. And ladies and gentlemen, you're going to write it nice and big. A brand new item to the market is going to be silver. Silver is a brand new item that no one in the world has ever seen until the Americans has opened up. Because it is only found in the Americas, which is going to drive the population up. So. This is also a very weird fact, and you're going to write this down by your chart, okay? You need to know that although millions of Americans die due to diseases, Worldwide population rises. It is a weird fact that AP loves and you absolutely need to know. Why does population rise worldwide? Why? It always comes back to this. Hey, there's new food items. 
new food items in both old world and new world. Okay, so you need to know that although millions of people are going to be dying in the Americas because of new diseases, specifically smallpox, Worldwide population is going to increase significantly because of all these new food items. Okay. Here we go. Migration. You need to know. Because of cash crops. Slav, let's go. Because of cash crops and uh, cash crops and plantations, slavery is going to, demand for slavery is going to increase. Significantly, which will create a whole new trade route, as well as Europeans are leaving. Europeans leave and head to the New World for more economic opportunities. Okay, so a couple of things are happening. Because we have plantations, we need slaves. Okay, so we're going to have start importing slaves. We also have Europeans who want more economic opportunity and start heading to the colonies. So, with these migrations begins the transoceanic uh, trans trade. You need to know that. Okay? It's going to be called triangular trade. And we'll get there on Monday. We have so much to do. Actually, no. You're going to write. It's going to be called triangular trade. And it's going to be called triangular trade. Then you need to know the Spanish are importing gold and silver at incredibly high rates. Oh, can underneath your cash crops and plantations, can you write fur? I need you to know fur because that justifies the French. That's what they're doing. Write it near like your cash crops. Last plantation. Oops, sorry, baby. I need you to know for because that's why I'm All right. We got a lot done. We got Martin Luther on Monday. Have a good day. Reagan. It's probably your marker. I would check my mirror. Check my mirror. Trying to help you out, girl. Just trying to help you. You see it? Yeah. Just trying to help you, girl. <laughs>